Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week like every week I'm very excited to present to you 12 incredible watches and we have a lot of gold on the table quite literally in just gold weight with these beautiful free gold integrated bracelet watches at the back and obviously the Movado over there as well as some modern watches some uh, more quirky watches sink in between and everything you come to expect here at Kibble Watches which is diversity of stock. Um, so thank you all very much for tuning in. As always if you're new here every Saturday 9.30 a.m. we release new watches on the website typically somewhere between 8 and 12 but very recently and probably for the foreseeable future it looks like 12 is is the reoccurring theme the amount of watches in each drop. Um, down in the description of this video you will see a timestamp to every single watch so let's say you're here just to see that gorgeous Movado you can do so via the description it will have that timestamp it will take you straight there there's also a link to every single watch for the website where you'll see all the additional photos uh, description the price if it's still available and obviously if it says sold it is sold so before we dive right into the watches because that's what I want to do today let's quickly take a look at what is on wrist I'm wearing a very beautiful watch and one that has had a lot of interest I've only shared it uh, or shown it as coming soon today which by the way do give us a follow over on Instagram um, to get sort of the first hints of what's coming soon if it says coming soon in the in the highlights reel or on our instagram stories it's available which is coming soon to the website so get in contact and purchase it before that point comes now this is a beautiful 1970s vintage hoya chronograph a reference 1611 with the value 7765 it's a gorgeous watch one i'm very very happy to present and in a different time i would probably be keeping to be honest i think it's incredible as i say a lot of interest on this if you are interested shoot me an email um, to snap it up but it may be sold before it makes it to the drop and if it doesn't then think yourself lucky and get it washed you can. Okay, so now that all of that is out of the way, let's crack on with what you're here to see, and that is the watches on the table. And we're going to start with what is probably going to come as no surprise as my favourite on the table. It's this gorgeous 1971 Patek Philippe Calatrava Blue Sigma Dial in 18 karat white gold. So that's 18 karat white gold case, bracelet, everything, and it comes with is extracts from the archives, and it's presented in pretty much what I would consider unpolished condition and a perfect example. It's going to be hard to find a better one. So let's take a closer look. What a watch to begin this week's episode with. What you're looking at right here is a gorgeous vintage Patek Philippe Calatrava with a blue Sigma dial in 18 karat white gold. Now let's run through some of those things. Obviously Patek Philippe is the brand. A lot of you will be well aware this is part of the Calatrava family of watches. Um, but with the integrated bracelet and a gorgeous texture throughout. Now what I would highly recommend just because the camera um, can struggle to pick up some details uh, is head over to the website and under points of mention you will see a link to a Google Drive showcasing additional photos. Now with these integrated bracelet watches, I've provided many additional photos, including movement shots and photos of the hallmarks and so on and so on. But the bracelet is beautifully connected and again has an exquisite finish that flows all the way down to its clasp with the Patek logo right there. Really beautiful example. This is a reference 3345.6 and we'll talk through how to exactly use the watch uh, in a moment, but screw case back right there, and inside is an automatic Patek Philippe Caliber 27-460M. Now, interestingly, the watch was produced and manufactured in 1971, but it didn't actually sell until September 1977. We get that information from the extract to the archives, um, which is a wonderful feature that Patek and vintage Pateks, especially, um, you can get from Patek, where it has all that information. So do see the photos of that on the website as well. Now, in terms of the blue Sigma dial, that's in reference to this original blue dial, which features the Sig uh, Sigma symbol next to Swiss made. And that indicates white gold or gold, sorry, throughout the, the dial. So the hands and the indices are white gold. Date over at three o'clock, nice, beautiful recessed crown, uh, which does take a little knack to get out. So you just have to go from the front forward, I, I say, just to get the best uh, spot on it, as you can see right there. Um, and yeah, not a huge amount more to say on it other than the fact it is gorgeous. It's very heavy, being all white gold and a heavy 18 karat white gold bracelets, hallmarking uh, can be seen on the clasp if I can get it in focus. And condition is wonderful. Uh, acrylic crystal, which we have just polished and lightly polished. The case and bracelet, everything to me appears unpolished because the detailing is so fine that even just going over lightly with a polish wheel would probably bring off a lot of that. Um, and in terms of how the clasp works, 
you have two sections in the clasp. Um, you have all the notches right there. Um, so you've got three notches total. You have this little bar which folds over and holds this in place and the plain bit right there. So you have three size adjustments. Now we put the exact sizing on the website to see that. For the total size, in terms of the smaller sizes, it will be marginal. Um, so do keep that in mind. In terms of sizing these bracelets, if it doesn't fit you, we have to have a jeweler cut and solder uh, each side slightly to, to bring it in. So do keep that in mind. Sizing these is not easy, it's costly, and it can be a little bit risky as well, um, but it, we can have it done for you. So what you'd do, you'd put it into the department you want it to be in. So let's go with the middle one uh, to show an example. Um, obviously I'm doing this through the camera, so do forgive me. That folds into place like so, and then you bring it around. It's a little knack to, to get used to it. Bring it around and clip it into place. Once it's clipped into place, that is it, it's fastened. And then to open it up, obviously lift that open and pull it out from there, push that back away and you can close that back down if you so wish. But let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go beautifully on my seven inch wrist. You can see the dimensions of this one are perfect. This bracelet, I believe to be uncut. You can see even on the tightest, it's uh, it's quite loose for me. I, could, I wouldn't probably wear it like this, um, but you can see the exact dimensions on the website. So this is the tightest and looser, it you know adds a reasonable amount of size compared to this as well. So what you're looking at is 35 mil by 35 mil lug to lug, only 9.5 mil thick, and that's including that heavily domed acrylic crystal, and 19.5 mil at the widest point of the bracelet, tapering down to the clasp. So go check out this incredible watch on the website today. From there, switching gears to an incredibly heavy and beautiful Amiga constellation right here, which is part of the C-Case family with the integrated bracelet as well, which is a super beautiful sort of razor bracelet. Um, a really lovely example with Amiga service history as well as a Amiga box from 1969, this watch is. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now onto an absolutely gorgeous Amiga Constellation. This beauty is from circa 1969 and that's based on the serial number. It is a very, very lovely example. It has been to Amiga in 2023 for a full service. They would have uh, put, uh, done a light polish as well, as you can see. Um, original dial, hands and gorgeous day date proudly stated right there the doll features a very fine linen style texture uh, service crown but still very very nice and amiga and gold as you'd expect conservatory case back with the conservatory and the stars proudly stated as all the constellations typically do also solid screw down case back and inside is an automatic amiga caliber 751 so this means it's the reverse to what we traditionally expect for setting time and date by that what i mean is first position you can obviously wind and use as normal when you pull out the crown one slight position, you're in the time changing mode as you can see, and pulling out all the way pops the date. So it's a pop date as you can see. So to manually, manually change the day of the week, you have to go around, um, but to change the date, you just pop like so. Um, obviously be careful doing so, um, but it's, it's easily done. So the reference is 168.54554 forward slash six. As I say, circa 1960, it comes with a box and 2023 Amiga service papers. Very similar in terms of the Patek we just looked at in, in regards to how the clasp works, but quickly beautiful fine razor bracelet. I don't think brands can produce bracelets like this anymore uh, and integrated to the case wonderfully as well uh, as you can see. So let's show you how the class works. You flip open this right here and slightly different to the one we just looked at, the Patek, you have that lever which holds this in place and you put this in first and then this lever, lever down. This is the reverse. So you put it in to the notch where you want it to be and then you close that down and clip it all together like such and it holds it obviously firmly in place. And just like the Patek, you have three notches all together. So three fine adjustments depending on your wrist size and the bracelet length and everything is stated on the website. And just like the Patek, we have lots of extra photos under the points of mention of this beautiful watch. So please do check them out as well as the, as well as the others. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go again on my seven inch wrist. Really wonderful, a huge amount of weight to this one as you'd expect. 
expect being all solid gold, but still a surprising amount of gold altogether. This is on the tightest for me, again, quite loose, just like the Patek was. Um, so we would have to get it sized if you have a wrist size my size. Um, these aren't the easiest bracelets to size because they have to be cut and soldered back together. Um, so do keep that in mind, but uh, the full dimensions of the bracelet can be seen on the website. So what you're looking at right here is 34 mil by 11.5 mil on the thickness. So very, very thin considering everything with a domed acrylic crystal. Only 40 mil look to look, so nice and compact. And 19 mil at this case point with the bracelet tapering down to the clasp. So an incredible watch and one you will not see again in this kind of condition, uh, most probably. So go check it out on the website today. From there on to the final integrated bracelet watch of the day. As you can see, I saved up a few to present them all together because I just think they're, they're incredible. To show them all together is amazing. This Vacheron Constantine uh, Les Historiques. Um, historics, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, please forgive me, I always do. This is 18 karat yellow gold with a textured dial, textured bracelet, absolutely gorgeous. And don't be afraid of the size of this one at 31 mil, it sounds on the smaller side, but it wears incredibly well. I, like when I first saw this watch and it was described as 31 mil and I put it on, I have to tell you, I was, I was convinced it wasn't. I got the calipers out and lo and behold, it was 31. I thought it was more like 34 to be honest. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now on to the incredible 18 karat gold Vacheron. Constantine, this is the Les, Les Historiques. I'm butchering the pronunciation, so I do apologize. Uh, automatic 18 karat yellow gold with the textured case, textured bracelet, which again, just like the other watches we've discussed, under points of mention on the listing, you'll see additional photos, and there's plenty of them, and it features a very fine linen style dial, um, which is also solid 18 karat gold with the indices and hands. Simple with this one, with just the two hands, no dates, nothing like that, just automatic and Geneve stated beyond the logo. Um, and yeah, there's a couple of like little like patina marks really on the dial, which is to be expected of this kind of age. And the price this is, is just incredible. Uh, uh, there's a, around £3,000 worth of scrap gold in this alone, um, which when you consider gold watches, that's one of the things you can definitely take into account. Obviously don't hold too much to it because buying watches based on scrap value is just not something you do. And if you do, you just got very lucky because um, the reality is it's obviously always going to be worth more than its scrap value. But it's kind of amazing really that you have that intrinsic value, which is undeniable in a watch like this, which I, I find fascinating. But anyway, this is a reference 7391. Behind that clip-on case back, which has some numbers at the bottom, is an automatic Vacheron Constantine K1120. Um, this movement has been serviced and is running beautifully. Something to keep in mind with these watches is you can hear the rotor because the movement is so incredibly thin and the rotor actually features some gold on the rotor, so it's got a weight to it. So it's you do hear it definitely spin when you wear it and the clicking of the crown when you wind does feel a little odd a little less um, than you you'd expect out of a watch but again it's just how these movements are this one's from circa 1970 and it doesn't come with any box or paperwork but you can see the condition and the example is wonderful um, so just like the other two you have two um, positions on this clasp so what you do is uh, and there's no extra levers or anything like that you just fold it in and clip it down very very simple you've got the Vacheron logo right there and to open it up you lift it out and just hook it down obviously you've got the little teeth there to stop it coming out so it sits there um, there are parts of gold burn so what gold burn is is when a watch really hasn't been used that that much you get parts where you can see it's darker than others um, and it creates almost this beautiful rainbow effect um, it's often referred to as gold burn, and it's, uh, it's a pretty beautiful thing in my opinion. But as I say, go check out all the extra photos under points of mention, but let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, just like the other three we've shown you, uh, loose on my wrist, um, and it would move around, but still absolutely gorgeous and sat right there. Hopefully you can now see exactly what I'm saying about the size at 31 mil. Um, this looks and wears a hell of a lot bigger than 31 mil in my mind. I thought it was more like 33, 34, uh, to the point where, as I say, when, when it was presented as 31, I checked with the calipers just to be sure because I couldn't believe it. Um, but really, really beautiful wrist presence and example. 31 by 31, 5.5 mil on the thickness, so incredibly thin, as you can see, and 18.5 mil with the widest part tapering ever so slightly to the bracelet. It's quite a quite a, um, less of a taper than the other ones we've looked at, but really gorgeous example. 
and well worth checking out. So go see it on the website today. So from vintage and gold to modern and great, let's go over to this Rolex. This is the Rolex Explorer 2 white dial. This is the current reference, the one you can still get at Rolex if you're lucky enough in 42 mil, the 226570. So let's take a closer look at this one. So Rolex Explorer 2 time, and this is the current iteration of the Explorer 2, meaning this is the one still available at retail as I say this on the 19th of March, 2023. Obviously I have to say that because these videos stay up forever. Um, so this is the current reference if you were able to walk in and buy one that you'd get. This is a reference 226570 with the polar white dial in 42 mil with the vibrant orange GMT hand and orange Explorer 2 proudly stated right there under Oyster Perpetual Date. I really like this reference for a few reasons. The 42 I actually wear surprisingly well. Do I prefer 40? Yes, I do personally, but I'm always amazed by how well this wears. And if you like bigger watches, this certainly ticks the box. But the boldness of the black of the hands and the indices is so striking compared to most Rolexes. This definitely feels like a like a very sporty watch, which is uh, quite funny con considering, you know, some of the other ones would be considered more sporty than this, but I think this definitely wins that, uh, that mark. This is a worn example, so there will be signs of wear throughout, some links with more scratches than others, but nothing major at all really, and nothing that it can't be polished out, but as always I say, you know, wear them, enjoy them. They're gonna get scratched, their watches at the end of the day. Uh, plain screw down case back as you'd expect, and inside is an automatic Rolex caliber 2385, and this specific one is from November 2022 with its box and paperwork and its spare links. Really nice bezel, uh, which is stainless steel with black, as you can see for the numerals and the arrows, and all nicely visible and clear. Date over at three o'clock with the Cyclops. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go comfortably on my seven inch wrist. You can see hopefully what I'm saying, which is at 42 mil, it's definitely larger than the 40 and it looks visibly uh, bigger, but it still wears incredibly well. And I think it's actually very comfortable. So 42 mil by 49.5 mil look to look just under that 50 mil sweet spot I usually talk about. 12 mil on the thickness and 21 mil on the look. So a little awkward, but there are brands out there um, creating fitted straps and things for this, but to be honest, the bracelet, in my opinion, just looks the best. So go check it out on the website today. From there, over to a dive watch from Amiga, but not just any old dive watch. This is the green dial green bezel version, which is absolutely amazing, uh, from 2023, January 2023 to be exact, with its full box and paperwork. So let's take a closer look at this one. Next up is a very attractive Amiga Seamaster. I think you're either a big fan of this watch or you're not for some people, especially with the helium escape valve up here at 10 o'clock, um, which, you know, it, it, when I first sort of got into this hobby and industry, I wasn't a fan of this. But as time's gone on, I've just learned to, to sort of accept it and it really doesn't bother me anymore. It definitely doesn't bother me on wrist. Um, so let me know down in the comments. Does it bother you? And if so, why? Um, this reference, I won't bore you with the reference off because it's incredibly long, but what you need to know is it's the modern coaxial 42 mil reference with the green ceramic wave dial and the green ceramic bezel, which in some lights is it's a very dark green. And this is the kind of green I personally like, very bright, vibrant greens. They're not usually to my personal taste, but this kind of darker green works beautifully. And in certain lights, it goes black. In other lights, it definitely pops. And um, for the most part, it's just a nice dark green. This one's from January 2023 with its box and paperwork. And it is a pre-owned watch, so some scratches and wear will be seen, but nothing too major. As always, and I try and explain this to people, and it sometimes you know, gets taken the right way and other times not. I try and do far more photos than most dealers to give you, the viewer and the buyer, the opportunity to judge the condition for yourself. And what I mean by that is one dealer's 10 out of 10 could be another person's or collector's or dealer's five out of 10. You know, condition is subjective and it's based on what you're used to. Now, I personally own and enjoy vintage watches, so wear is, is slightly different to me than someone who maybe has only ever bought brand new, right? Their expectation may be different. So between the video that you see here, the photos on the website and the additional photos under points of mention, between all those, I would like to think you can get a good idea of the condition of the watch and come to your own conclusion. And also there's the opportunity to come and view it in the office. Now I understand that's not possible for everyone, but I definitely do my best to give you the power and the tools you need to make that decision for yourself. Um, so as we flip it over, you've got an exhibition case back right there showcasing the automatic Amiga coaxial caliber 8800. 
quite an attractive movement. I would say quite industrial, you know, I, I think the finishing, as beautiful as it is, it still feels quite industrial in a good way, you know, it's just a nice, attractive workhorse movement, and it looks as such. But let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, comfortably on my seven inch wrist, as you can see. Now, something I forgot to mention is Amiga do offer a fitted rubber strap for this model, which looks awesome as well. So I'd highly recommend going, speaking to them, and picking one of those up. I'm sure other brands make them as well, so you're not just limited to that, but it's 42 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 13.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options for basic straps as well, but the bracelet's incredibly comfortable and super hefty. So go check this one out on the website today. Now we have two Chrono Tokyos. Both of these are the uh, Raiwa Classic or Rewa. I'm again butchering the pronunciation, so I do apologize, but we're gonna start with my favorite of the two. They're both equally beautiful and I would happily wear them, but I do have a favorite and that's this bronze style. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now on to my personal favorite of the two Chrono Tokyos we are showing you today. This, e well, they're both are early references, part of the sort of classic uh, Rewa, Raiwa um, era of watches. Now, again, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, so please do forgive me, but specifically this one is the Chrono Tokyo Bronze Dial, uh, reference CT00P. Now, this one's from December 2020. Um, as you can see, it is in wonderful condition, as is the other one. Uh, they are pre-owned, but they've just been very well looked after and lightly worn, to be honest with you. Comes paired on its original Chrono Tokyo um, strap, as you can see, a very high quality and lovely strap with a buckle which is not signed but is uh, is the original and it also comes with a aftermarket high quality strap that suits the watch beautifully now as we flip it over you can see you're presented with a screw down case back with all the signing you'd expect um, right there and it was produced by Tic Tac watches as you can see and this inside this is an automatic Miyota caliber 90S5 which is part of the 9000 series of Miyota movements some of the highest quality movements coming out of Miyota which is owned by Citizen um, which are definitely producing movements that do rival the likes of Grand Seiko just at a far more affordable price point um, so yeah absolutely incredible as I say December 2022 box papers extra strap and also the beautiful um I, I, everyone sort of calls them something different like handkerchief pocket square you know just it, to me they're a beautiful piece of art um it comes with that as well which has a beautiful design on it so be sure to check those out and the additional photo so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist you can see that sort of ring uh, around for the minute track and the the polished hands it just creates this gorgeous contrast when you catch the light everything sort of shines and the bronze on this is a very subtle bronze almost salmon um, in certain lights and then very dark in others um, you can probably see why I'm such a fan of it I think it just looks incredible and the additional strap it comes with uh, which isn't a Chrono Tokyo strap but a very high quality strap looks beautiful um, so let's talk dimensions. This is 37 mil by 43.5 mil look to look only 10.5 mil thick. Do keep in mind a lot of that thickness is actually in that domed crystal. Um, so it's very low to the wrist and 20 mil on the looks are endless options for this one if you're not a fan of the pairings and you'll find a strap you really like. But go check it out on the website today. From my personal favorite to what I actually think a lot of you are probably gonna prefer, and that is this gorgeous one right here, which is the steel or gray dial version. So let's take a closer look. And here we go, following on from the previous Chrono Tokyo we were just looking at, this is the gray dial CT003Q. Absolutely gorgeous. I know I said the bronze is my favorite, but I equally love this one and would happily wear it uh, as well. You can see you've got the same track around the outside, which is like these uh, concentric circle rings in stainless steel and the polished hands it all just contrasts beautifully and when it catches the light especially with that gray tone it's a very muted gray and by that I mean it's very flat and it just adds to the the allure of the watch and just how it looks as well condition just like the last one incredible it is pre-owned but obviously been very well looked after and the same screw down case back right there uh, showcasing all the references and details and it, this one is from June 2020 with his box and paperwork also an additional strap um, it does compared again on its Corona Tokyo strap with its original but unsigned buckle um, and the other strap looks wonderful on the watch as well 
inside the same automatic Miyota caliber 90S5, as I said before, part of the uh, 9000 series from Miyota, which are some of the highest quality movements coming out of Japan, along with the likes of the Grand Seiko. It's just these Miyotas are a bit more affordable, um, so certain brands are, are choosing to use them over other options as well, which I don't blame them, they're great. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions, and I would highly recommend viewing the bronze one just for a couple more details on certain things, um, but it's the same reference, just a different dial color. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Uh, and I will just say head over to the website and be sure to read everything we put on there as well, because we go into a lot more detail than I ever can do in these videos. Otherwise we'd be here all day long. For example, these are limited in production numbers. Um, so you can go read about that on the website as well. But back to this 37 mil by 43.5 mil lug to lug, only 10.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options for this one, but it wears absolutely beautifully. So go check it out on the website today. Now on to a watch I personally owned uh, a little while ago and I absolutely loved. And again, under different circumstances, it would still be in my collection today. That's this gorgeous 1950s Movado triple calendar, 18 karat pink gold. So a bit rarer in the pink with this fancy case and fancy lugs. Absolutely beautiful. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now on to a absolutely gorgeous Movado. As I say, one that was in the personal collection for a while and under different circumstances, it would still be with me. This is the reference R4878, uh, and this is from circa 1950s. It's 18 karat pink gold, and you can see the case is wonderful. You have a slightly curved um, bezel which slopes inwards towards the dial and these double-stepped or triple-stepped fancy lugs which are just incredible. Really nice profile for out and a snap-on 18 karat gold case back housing a manually wound Movado caliber inside which is a real treat to use. Now let's talk you through how this watch works. So looking at it you can probably clearly see hours, minutes, and a beautiful red second hand. You have a pointer date around the outside, the day of the week, and the month. Now, as you go around manually, it will change everything over manually as you'd expect. Now, the month doesn't change over manually. That has to be done um, yourself via the pusher. Um, sorry, automatically I'm talking about. When you go around 24 hours, everything changes over automatically with the date, uh, the day of the week and the um, date as you'd expect. But the month doesn't change over once you get past 31. You have to do that manually via the pusher. There's two pushers. The top pusher changes the month. The bottom pusher changes the date. Um, to change the day, you have to go around manually past 12 o'clock. So that's the way to, to go through, set it as you need. Um, so when you get past the next month, you just have to push in that pusher to change the month over. Hopefully all that makes sense. If you have any problems figuring it out, just let me know. Um, but yeah, really be beautiful example, wonderful uh, condition as you can see. And one I'll be very sad to let go, but needs must, you know how it goes. So circa 1950s, original dial, original hands. It's just, you know, you're not gonna find an example this good in my opinion. Um, I think you're gonna very much struggle, but let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Another reason why this one definitely shines is the proportions. It's beautiful on the wrist at 34 mil by 41.5 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil on the thickness. So it wears incredibly low against the wrist and 17 mil on the lug. So a little awkward, but there are options out there. I think we paired it on the perfect strap though. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a Norcane. This is one of a few Norcanes I've now had. And I really actually really like this one with the carbon fiber on the case and the black dial, the texture and sort of the story behind it as well. That's the Norcane Wild one. Um, so let's take a closer look. Now on to a gorgeous Norcane. And we've had a few Norcanes. They're built incredibly well. They look great on the wrist and they're priced reasonably in my opinion as well. But this one with the carbon fiber, um, is a step above, you know, you've got the carbon fiber in the case. You've also got different composites, which we talk more about on the website, uh, signed screw down crown and a screw down exhibition case back showcasing the automatic Norcane NN20 forward slash one by Kenzil uh, or Kenzie, sorry. Um, so yes, definitely check all those details out on the website. Now I won't bore you with the reference to this one. It's incredibly long, but this is the wild one, Hakuna Mipaka limited edition of 500 pieces. I've probably butchered the pronunciation as usual, but you can go check out all the details of what this is a limited edition for and all those kind of things on the website. We talk in more details of that, but you have that gorgeous symbol over at six o'clock, this textured dial, which just is wonderful. And it follows through even onto the strap. If you look very closely. I don't think they could have done a nicer job if they tried personally. 
Um, a carbon fiber clasp as well with the brand logo, fitted rubber strap as you'd expect, which just works in the whole design effortlessly. Again, the symbol on the back and one of 500 proudly stated. These are still available at retail and we are offering it obviously below those prices. I think for the money, this is a no brainer if you're after something like this. Um, you know, this won't be for everyone. Black, all, all sort of black watches, they seem to be very hit and miss with people. So I would say if you have the opportunity, come try it on for yourself. But if not, just snap this up, enjoy it. And then if it's not for you after six months or a year, you know, move it on. There's no, there's no harm in doing those kind of things. But this one's from February 2023 with its box and paperwork. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrists. You can see the proportions work perfectly. This is definitely a sporty sort of dive watch with a very cool stealth look. Uh, 42 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, only 12.5 mil on the thickness, which is very good considering the overall design, I would say. And 22 on the lug, so endless options for swapping that one out. But to be honest, this strap pairing is perfect. So go check out this unique watch on the website today. From there, over to a Bamford. And George Bamford is a crazy guy making crazy watches. And this is a really cool one, I think, close to home for him with his love for Land Rover. That is this. Uh, Bamford Land Rover Limited Edition uh, LR001. There was another edition, I think still available, but this is the one that seemed the most popular and it sold up pretty damn quick. So let's take a closer look. Now onto a unworn Bamford and Land Rover Limited Edition called the LR001. Now you can head over to the website and read more about the inspiration for this piece. But anyone who's ever seen an interview with George knows he loves Land Rover and his old Land Rovers, uh, his pride and joy beyond watches, of course. Um, and this is a very, very cool limited edition, very unique design, nice screw down case uh, crown with Land Rover proudly stated and a simple case back as well, which is screwed down. Uh, and inside is an automatic Solita SW200-1B, and this one's from November 2022 with his box paperwork and some funky stickers in there as well. The watch, as I say, is unworn. It's still stickered, sticker on the uh, crystal, case back, and the buckle, which, as you can see, proudly states Bamford. It's a nice NATO strap as well. Again, such a cool, unique look, and I think it's great when brands are pushing the limits. We see a lot of the same sort of stuff coming out of brands today. You know, you could kind of look at a row of watches in a retail store and you'll see similarities across the board. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's clearly what people like. But I do love it when a brand like Bamford um, push the push the limits of what we expect. You know, you've got an integrated strap uh, case profile. So let's show it here um, the best I can. So let's take this off. You can see these bars underneath very sort of like, um, oh, what's it called? The Tudor... Uh, the watch has just left me. A lot of you will know exactly what I'm talking about. The Marine National, um, which has these solid fixed bars like this, um, which again isn't for everyone. It does mean you're limited on straps, but I think once you've worn this strap in, it's going to be incredibly comfortable. Um, so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. Now, as it's unworn, I don't want to start creasing the strap too much, so I'm just going to rest it against my wrist like that. Uh, it's 40 mil by 48.5 mil lug to lug, 13 mil on the thickness, and 18 mil on the lugs. Um, so yeah, go check out this incredible watch on the website today. From there over to a brand which just seems to be making waves every single time I look at social media. Maybe they're just doing their marketing really well, but I know from collectors, everyone seems to love them, and that's Christopher Ward. So this is the Christopher Ward 12, Glacier Blue in 40 mil, a great watch. So let's take a close look at this one. Now on to the gorgeous Christopher Ward. This is called the 12, although I think everyone just refers to it as the Christopher Ward 12, um, <laughs> but it is called the 12. This is the 40 mil Glacier Blue reference, which I won't bore you with the full reference of because it's incredibly long and you can go see it on the website if you are interested. But this one's from May 2023 with its full box and paperwork and all of its links. It is a worn watch, so somewhere will be seen um, but at the end of the day it's a watch it's supposed to be worn and enjoyed so pick it up and throw it on wrist and don't worry about it inside here is an automatic Salita caliber sw200-1 um, you can see right there with a the christopher ward uh, rotor proudly stated on it a very reliable workhorse movement you've got the date down there at six o'clock which is color matched thank you christopher ward i wish more brands 
would do this. It definitely just makes that slight aesthetic uh, difference, in my opinion, the applied Christopher Ward logo. Uh, and I, I find it fascinating when a brand doesn't write their logo name, they just do, you know, as you see here, the, the applied logo. And especially for Christopher Ward, which seems to have had a lot of flack over the years for their logos and choices, um, I feel like they've now hit the nail on the head and done it perfectly. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Screw down crown at three o'clock again with the Christopher Ward logo. And the strap is very comfortable and has quick release and they offer a rubber strap as well on the website, potentially other, other straps as well, so do check that out. Um, but let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. Here we go, on my seven inch wrist, you can see really good looking piece. I do think it is better on the wrist than the PRX personally. Um, I like both, but I think the 12 is definitely a step up, but then I would expect that for the price difference as well. So this is 40 mil by 44.5 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil on the thickness and 25 mil on the lug width, tapering down to the clasp. So go check out this watch on the website today. And last but by no means least, an aesthetically gorgeous Unimatic. Now, I'm a fan of the aesthetics of Unimatic anyway, but this one particularly is great. This is the Messina Lab Blue Limited Edition U1 L MLM Limited to 200 from 2020. So let's take a closer look at this now one. Now on to the Unimatic. This is a U1 reference, and this is a Messina Lab Limited Edition of 200 pieces with that beautiful blue dial and blue bezel. As you can see, paired on this nice blue strap, it comes with three straps total and is from circa 2020 with its box and paperwork. As you probably come to expect from Unimatic, the box is a Pelican style case with Unimatic and Messina Lab written on the top, which is very nice. And this is number 99 of 200 and the specific reference is U1 dash MLM. I believe this was the first or one of the first limited editions Messina Lab did with Unimatic and one of the early limited editions in general with Messina Lab. So very, very cool to see. Inside, as you may expect from this period of Unimatic, is an automatic Seiko Calibre NH35A, a very reliable, um, easy to use movement. And you can see a lovely case back on this one. More. It's always a pleasure flipping around a Unimatic because you never quite know what you're going to get exactly. Um, but very, very attractive. Not a huge amount more to say on this one. You know, if you're after a blue Unimatic, the options aren't truly endless and there's not many as gorgeous as this one in my opinion. Even down to the colour of the loom, it's white, but it almost has this slightly creamy tone to it, making it almost like a patina, which is just really, really attractive. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, very comfortable with this Velcro style strap, which you can get a perfect fit with. Um, obviously you just have to wear it into your wrist size if it's different to where it's currently creased at, but you'll get there. Uh, this is 41.5 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, 13.5 mil on the thickness and 22 mil on the lugs. So if these, uh, the three straps it comes with uh, don't sort of appeal to you, you can swap it out for something else. So go check it out on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls, 12 incredible watches in this week's drop. Let me know down in the comments what is your favourite. I'd be very interested to hear. Now I know the integrated bracelets aren't for everyone, they definitely seem to be making a comeback and obviously I'm putting my money where my mouth is by accumulating more and more. Uh, so I certainly love them, I've always liked them and I've had them in my collection for years as well. Obviously not quite to this calibre just yet for myself, but maybe one day and if I did, all three of these would definitely be contenders. So let me know down in the comments what's your favourite and I look forward to seeing you next week for next week's drop which is also looking incredible a few more modern watches from fears to bremont to more rolexes also to vintage as you'd expect as well so we'll see you all again next week take care